The bottom of the hour, I'll, I'll air this amazing six-minute report that Rob Dew has put together. I don't know what you call this. I mean, total proof that Hillary's health is gone uh, or the history of Hil Hillary's health problems uh, or a special report or the Hillary's, you know, Hillary's public health records released. I mean, because these are our public health records, not Hillary's health records released, Hillary's public health records released. You should probably just describe that in the description, but I mean, her public health record is there to see. Since whatever happened in 2012, the word is brain surgery, the word is brain tumor, the word is bleeding and their sinus into her brain. Most people don't survive a stroke like that. And they admit that went on. And she's on all these weird drugs and it doesn't make sense. So we'll have a focus interview with Dr. Steve Pachenik, who is a uh, board certifying uh, psychiatrist, uh, and of course, overseeing whole medical facilities and has a degree in understanding the neurology and the physicality of the brain problems and mental illness. Because listen, I'm not a jet pilot and I didn't go to the moon, but I can look at Hillary Clinton and tell you that lady's got one foot in the grave. She's dragging the other one into the grave with her right now. So what does that signify for COG as well? What does that signify for the future of this republic with these emergency meetings being held. This is incredible. Dr. Steve Pachanik is an MD, PhD, an American psychiatrist, former State Department official, author, and publisher. And he's headed up entire medical facilities, treated world leaders, you name it. Run psychological warfare from major agencies. StevePachanik.com is Twitter. is Twitter.com at Steve Pachanik. Now he's just with us for a segment or two because he's a busy guy and uh, the woods are lovely, dark, and deep. But we got a lot of news to cover before we sleep. Some special breaking reports, you name it. But here's the two areas I want to cover with Pachenik, and he can add whatever quadrant he wants into this. A, am I wrong at a gut level that this is a big victory that mainstream media has been discredited? Obviously, Hillary's very sick. No matter how many medical doctors they fire, what they do, major medical associations even say she looks really ill. What in the hell is she doing taking these medications? What Pachenik said over a month ago is what Drew said a week later. Um, that what is she doing taking armored thyroid and Coumadin? This is insane. My dad's an oral surgeon. He's, he knows that's crazy and was showing me, you know, the, just the drug interactions. It's how you'd kill somebody. So uh, Drew says, I'm worried about you, Hillary, and they fire him. What's really going on with her health? What does this signify for the media that's blown up their face? And then the big enchilada. They're meeting, this political even admits, in D.C., the Democrats, on whether they're going to go to the Electoral College, the states, and try to basically put the election off. That is in mainstream news. We have it boiled down in articles at Infowars.com. Uh, so, yeah, uh, it's good to discredit the system, but what in the world is going on? Obviously, Pachenik has a lot of context in, in the military and other areas that have been trying to block all this, so we'll get his approximation of what's happening. Dr. Pachenik, thanks for coming on. It's my pleasure, Alex. As usual, uh, we were right. A month ago, I said she was severely ill. I said she had a physical mental illness. I explained it in detail. I didn't wish her harm, but I would, we turned out to be correct. Uh, doctor, her doctor was wrong. Uh, she's not in excellent health. Lisa Bardak, who was trained, her doctor was trained at Cornell, where I trained, should have done a lot better uh, workup. This is she cannot run for the presidency of the United States. It's as categorical as I said a month ago. I said it yesterday to my people. I said, here's the following. Number one, the media is discredited. It turns out that a lot of our Twitters now have been retweeted by people on the mainstream media. But despite all that, we have a major problem right now. The Democratic National Committee has to meet, but so does the President of the United States and Biden. The issue now is one of the maintaining the uh, integrity of the republic and the transition of power. This is not the first time I've encountered this problem. I encountered it when I was a medical student with John F. K. Uh, John F. Kennedy, who was psychotic, had Addison's disease. We encountered it with Nixon, who had been in the hospital under stress. We encountered it with Reagan, who also had problems, and so on and so forth. So. The Republic has to now go back to its intelligence and its national security uh, elements, including the generals, chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff, including the President of the United States and the Vice President. This is a apolitical issue which has to deal with the transition of power and the election of a person who has to be viable. 
The Democratic National Committee can pick Biden. I have no problem with that. Or they can pick Sanders. I have no problem with that. But in both cases, they have to reveal the medical records of either Biden, who's already had an aneurysm, who's had multiple problems, although he's been effective these are the his own uh, uh, legislation and the fact that he can recuperate Sanders is in pretty good physical health. That's not up to me. What's up to me is the fact that we must open up the medical records of Trump, which he will do. And now, the in fact, reportedly, he's at the doctor today. I've got that from the folks. That's correct. But the key element now, Alex, and what you have been part of, and again, I'm not uh, throwing hosannas at you, is that you opened up and allowed us to open up the truth once again. And ironically, the truth came on a double truth with 9-11 and her passing out. Was that not biblical? Was that not archetypal? That is biblical. That is Greek tragedy. That is an amazing statement. If one believes in a God, which I do, it's his statement or her statement saying, you will be punished for what you have done, and so will the republic. Cheney, Bush, Zelik, and a whole bunch of the neocons that she was working with. Now we have to concern ourselves about the republic, and that's one of the issues that I've suggested to my people, that they think very carefully, that they have doctors from all four services, the Navy, Air Force, Army, that they have the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the director of national intelligence, Clapper, along with President Obama, who I believe will do the best he can for the republic in terms of transition of power, as well as Biden and others. Into the yeah, because public. they're not going to get away with trying to pull some, some scam. I mean, it's going to no, blow up big. No. I, I, I honestly don't believe that in a time of, of uh, crisis, which this is, quite frankly, where we predicted this correctly. This is not an issue of whether we were right, which we were, and the media was because wrong. Because I haven't used that term, but probably I've said this looks like a super historical crisis we're in. It is. And, and honestly, Alex, you and, and the people have been part of this. I mean, this is the world. Well, it's the people. It's Drudge. It's you. It's all of us together because the mainstream media has discredited itself. I want itself. to make it clear because we've taken so much punishment on no, you're top right. of it. You're right. Not only, uh, remember, just a month ago, she even said we were part of a conspiracy theory of medicine. And we still well, uh, and she came out and said I had a dark heart and was the enemy and that our media should be shut down. That's correct. But be it as it may, right now we have another issue which you should address with other people about the transition of power in the republic. Not a usurpation of power. Obama understands this. I have full faith he will not usurp power. I have full faith that Biden will not usurp power. I know some of the people in the Democratic Party. They knew very well when I said a month ago, these people know me and they know my capability to be a physician. I wasn't kidding that she was impaired. I don't wish her that. The part that really shocks me, Alex, and I got to say this to the audience as well, is, you know, neither Chelsea, Bill Clinton, or anybody in her family made a major effort to stop her from destroying herself physically and mentally. That's what shocked me. And I happen to have met Chelsea, and I happen to know her, and she's a very caring individual. Why no one in her family stopped this nonsense, I can't explain. That's my biggest point, is what is Hillary thinking when she's obviously been so sick for years and is deteriorating quickly that she could get away with this? It really shows delusion. Correct. That is total self-delusion. You and I have been talking about it for years on end. It's pathological, but now... Finally, the body, the body said, no more, no more delusion, no more stress. I can't handle it. She even so let me ask you this question. As a medical doctor, as an expert on the brain looking at this, yes. let me, clearly she's uh, uh, deteriorating quickly. She's wearing the glasses for people that have seizures. She's clearly having a seizure when she falls over. How are they going to spin this? And uh, am I correct? It looks like she's uh, deteriorating quickly. What could be the real cause? Well, the real cause is that she has a tumor on the brain and also a tumor in the lung. We don't know where the, uh, any, any element metastasized. What I do know is a continuous fainting and syncope, syncope, which we call fainting, as well as the seizures and the fact that she's had people who've tried to cover up. The, the answer is not a good answer. I don't wish this, but the inevitable outcome will be some form of disability, and I hope not death. 
But this is not a course that has an upward uh, slope to it. And that's why I'm saying to the Democratic National Committee, listen carefully. You have physicians there who work for me. Jim McDermott is a board-certified uh, psychiatrist, an adult and child. You have Rand Paul. You have ben, well, ben Carson, a Republican, but you have 19 physicians in Congress. Any one of them or all of them should examine her and make the final determination. What's interesting, Alex, is historically we physicians have been very much a part of the republic. I'm not an aberration. 11% of the Declaration of Independence was written by physicians. And 9% of the Constitution were written by physicians. So you have carried on, along with me and others, a very noble tradition of allowing physicians to maintain the integrity of the republic. She cannot run. That is absolutely without So what do you question. expect them to do? I mean, there's different things, but they're openly in the news talking about uh, you having to go to the Electoral College, uh, the states. I mean, this is crazy. It, 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 it will not go to the Electoral College because the Electoral College does not represent the will of the people. What it has to do is have a temporary uh, abeyance while Trump, you know, continues his nomination or is, is a campaign. Either they put Biden in or Bernie Sanders. But the reality is but we don't want to push the, 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 the end of the election back, right? They might, and I don't have a problem with that. And the reason for that is that we have a crisis. It should have been predictable what happened. But the truth of the matter is, once again, this is what happens when you have nefarious deeds within the Hillary. No, I agree. And this arrogance, this, this delusion. So it's not only arrogance, but it's the nature of willfully harming the republic. I, you know, the issue of arrogance is one. But the fact that they were willing to harm the republic, to put somebody in who was not capable of running the republic, that's inexcusable. That is, uh, that is treason, and for me, that's many other issues. But let's address this issue. The elections will have to be delayed. The Democratic National Committee can sponsor whomever they want. They have to be very careful about it. The president of the United States will not usurp power because the, the, the military and the intelligence community will be on alert for that. He understands that, and he understands that we're willing to work with him on a, a mutually assured basis of construction, not destruction. So this is one of the times in America and in the world where the world is watching us, and what happens now will show the best elements of our country. Hillary will have to resign. We'll have to pull back. Well, I think it'll overall, even if they delayed it two or three months at, you know, into next year, I think it overall will put Trump way ahead, discrediting the Democrats and the mainstream media. I think this is a demarcation point where you can really mark the true death of the mainstream media. We're going to come back with one more segment, see if you agree with me. Dr. Pachinik, stevepachinik.com, twitter.com at stevepachinik, P-I-E-C-Z-E-N-I-K. I'm Alex Jones with Infowars.com. Regardless of what you think, history is happening now. We have crossed the point of no return. We are at the event. A video up on Infowars.com of people wearing the exact same glasses that Hillary wears when they basically try to stop having seizures. Dr. C. Pachinik uh, is our guest. I have a clip here uh, I want to play. Let's go ahead and go to that clip. Like you, I just, uh, I see what I see. The coughing fit was uh, a week ago, so I assume that was pneumonia also. I mean, I would think it would have been, so something's going on. But I just hope she gets well and gets back on the trail, and uh, we'll, we'll be seeing her at the debate. Even when she came out an hour and a half later and hugged that child in that stage propaganda, like out of some third world you know, dictatorship, she really looks worse by the day, uh, Dr. Pachenik. But, but, but going back before the break, I was asking the question, I mean, overall, doesn't all of this just advance the populism, the new Americanism, uh, the patriotism we see? I mean, I think overall this is a big win for the new media, Trump and the awakening. Yeah, I would agree with you because it's taken five years for the uh, new patriotism and the new America to arise after the 9-11 uh, nonsense and storylines that have continued and they're just not working. But beyond that, what it really tells us is how do we handle in a more media crisis. Ironically, today there's been a ceasefire in Syria and now it's up to the president to decide what he wants to do domestically. So we are being judged 
and more importantly than Hillary, Hillary is really not as significant as everybody thinks at this moment. What's far more important is how the republic reacts to a crisis like this. If they decide to delay the election or they decide that she runs in the election and they decide that Trump may or may not win an election, that is what the world will be looking at and that is what the stock markets will be reflecting. So it's an important time for us and actually the new America that you're part of, I'm part of, and others, it's a populism that broke through the lies, distortions, and corruptions. But at the same time now, we have to show that we have understanding, compassion, and empathy. Absolutely. Now is where we have to continue not getting into race wars and stuff that Soros Correct. wants. We have to really have some very, very serious uh, smarts here. Correct. And what has to happen now is we have to be judicious. We have to be, as we've always been, serious. And we have to understand what is the next evolution in the republic and maintaining the stability of the republic with our great warriors, our great intelligence service. And now we have to be able to maintain that capability financially and politically so that the world says, my God, only in America could they get through this. Absolutely. Well, I know for a fact Trump was approached by great patriots, some of which you know. Of and, course. and he already knew the country was in trouble, and they actually drafted him in. Uh, and the fact that he's done all this uh, is, is just amazing. This is so historic. I'm just really worried about the fact that they're so arrogant. It's, it's clear to you and others she needs to step down immediately. They're so arrogant. They might just run her, even though she might even be able to walk. I mean, I... I well, you may be right, Alex, but uh, the irony of self-destruction is that it really does become self-destruction, and she will not make it. I can guarantee you, as a physician, she will not make it, if even she gets elected to the White House. Well, give us your brief prognosis looking at her. I mean, she's it's a not good. I mean, the fact that she coughed a, a week and a half ago, I timed her coughing in Long Island. It was two and a half minutes without stopping. Subsequently, I watched how she fell down. That's not the first time, the second, or the third time. Her doctor knows very well that the full scans and the CAT scans and MRI and all the rest that was done at physician and surgeons, what I've said for over a month, will reveal that she has tumors, she has thrombosis, she is not well. She's not capable of running for the president of the United States. Then what are they thinking? That, that discredits the whole power structure behind her, that they're crazy to run a corpse. Well, the point is it's wishful thinking, and what she will argue and what Bill Clinton will argue is, look, we have the chance to get in there, albeit then we'll pass it on to Tim Kaine. The truth is Tim Kaine is not qualified to be president of the United States. By the way, it's even in the Hill, you talked about this two weeks ago, that he is basically these Marxist connections. All this oh, word I mean, he's pathetic. He's just a political operative who grew up, you know, it was a Jesuit who worked with the CIA, denied it, had the New York Times have to write back to me to say, oh, he's not CIA. Really? I could care less. But the truth of the matter is everything he said about Honduras was an absolute lie, and he was very much involved. All right, in closing, you made a lot of predictions. You don't like to make them, but we got 60 seconds. Do you think, I mean, what's going to come out of these meetings the next few days that they admit are ongoing, a political I admits? think the DNC will ask for postponement of an election. Good Lord. Well, no, it's, it's good America, because the American public has to decide. And at this point, the new American Republic, which we represent, so-called conspiracy people, which is ironic. We're the only ones who are speaking the truth for 15 years, and the real conspiracy is broken down, all the way from 9-11 to Hillary Clinton. That's right. They're conspiracy screwed. Trump this keeps the nomination. They have to get a new nominee. This Correct. is going to be amazing. We'll and talk to you win. soon, Dr. Pachenik. Thank Either you. way, he'll win. Either way, he'll win. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Alex, and thank you, Roddy. Powerful uh, interview. We'll be back.